So what do we mean by corrosion level? And this is a, uh, the good news is IPC has uh, developed a specification called IPC 4552, which covers electrolysis nickel immersion gold, because there's always been the concern about the way that the gold deposits on nickel, there's a potential for actual corrosion spikes in the nickel itself. And that becomes a real issue. Now, there's, the good news is we've identified through the industry and a lot of research different levels of corrosion. As you can see here, we list them from levels one through five. We're going to talk more about that, but we want to be sure that you understand that even some of the slightest levels of corrosion does not mean your product should be rejected because you have to understand that in the process of depositing, uh, the process of depositing immersion gold deposit on nickel, there is going to be some removal of nickel. That's how immersion deposits work. The important fact for you, the idea for you as a fabricator, is to control your gold and nickel processes. And like you can see here, here are the, the different levels of corrosion in this slide. And again, we've measured the corrosion spikes. And you can see, looking for the areas where you see the arrows, the white arrows, they're pointing to those areas where there is corrosion in the nickel. And the nickel is this big, thick gray coating here. The gold, of course, is very thin, so you can hardly see it. And then here's your copper. And you can see here that the committee that has done some work on this has identified the various levels of corrosion and what that can mean for you, the fabricator, and the assembler. And as you can see here, on levels one and two, there is little to no hypercorrosion or corrosion spike seeing. And again, the work that's been done by many fabricators, OEMs, and assemblers show that this type of corrosion does not adversely affect your assembly or your solderability. When you get to level three, even that is not overly a concern, but you still want to use that as a potential for seeing if there's any spread in this defect itself, which can then later negatively impact the performance uh, of your of your board when it goes through assembly, whether it's through uh, die, chip, attach, component, solderability, et cetera. Where things really get dicey is in levels four and levels five. You can see the corrosion spikes have become larger, more numerous, and some of them are going right down to the bare copper, which obviously levels four and five would be showstoppers for sure. So the question is, how do we fix this or how do we minimize this type of situation? So, think about it. Here's a good example on the left. Uh, corrosion spikes to level two, clearly visible, but they don't interfere. As you can see here, this solder joint, or solder was actually you know, soldered and wetted. There was a uniform, here's the solder right here. You can see how it made a uniform uh, wet with the uh, nickel. So even though there's slight corrosion spikes here, it did not in effect hurt you. Here's a corro corrosion spike that we identified as level three. And the micron depth was, it was one micron. But again, there was no penetration down to the copper pad. But you can see slight spikes here and there. But again, uh, it's soldered beautifully. So again, don't necessarily throw the baby out with the bath water if you see a situation like this because the data does support and you should always follow the data you know follow the evidence as they say on on CSI the evidence tells you that situations like this do not negatively impact your performance or your solderability so regardless the concern is how do we minimize this type of situation preventing it from affecting us negatively well first of all this is one of the things that it happens in the industry. Typically, when you set up an immersion gold solution, most processes run about 1 gram to 1.5 grams per liter of gold as metal. Typically, more and more of the development work has gone and with the idea of saving gold uh, cost, because gold is a very expensive metal, has moved down into the range of 0.7 to 0.75 grams per liter of gold as metal. That's fine as long as you control it in that area. Because when the gold gets too low and below 0.7, the opportunity for more hypercorrosion becomes more prevalent, now causing more issues. The other thing to, to ensure of is, is we've seen evidence that LPI, or liquid fluid imageable solder mass, 
when it's not cured properly, can reduce and can cause leaching, or can leach onto the pads of the surface during the, the curing process, and that can adversely affect the, the surface of the copper, which then affects the ability of the nickel, which is the first coating to go down on the copper before gold, again, affects the nickel's processing of uniformity, plating uniformly on the copper, which then affects the way the gold plates on the copper, or on the nickel. And when that happens, we get this, we get more hypercorrosion spikes. spikes. So keep that in mind. Uh, Pre-cleaning, we all we know about pre-cleaning and how to set up the, the lines and how important that is to make sure that the LPI, the liquid film imageable, is properly cleaned so it doesn't leach and properly cured. And then don't overdo it by leaving your boards in the gold solution too long. For, for solderability purposes, you only need between one and a half and 2.5 micro inches of gold over your nickel. And that's the evidence again says, and the specifications say that that is a perfect thickness. So again, reduce the time in your gold. Don't leave it in there for so long. Try to get four or five micro inches of gold because that's not the way immersion gold processes work. All right. So you get less nickel corrosion again, and then make sure you know, and you can measure thicknesses uh, reliably with XRF. And again, monitor all the additives in your nickel bath to ensure the phosphorus content stays within a seven to 10% uh, by weight phosphorus. So some suggestions for you to help you minimize this type of situation. We, and we, Reduce your, your, your gold time uh, as long as you can get one and a half to two micro inches of plated gold over the, over the nickel, you will have excellent solderability preservation because it's the gold deposit that does the job of ensuring the solderability is of the nickel. Nickel is not by itself very solderable. It interacts with the environment, it oxidizes, and of course, you have several concerns there. Now, when you're plating boards, and if you're plating them in, in a rack, where there's multiple boards in the, in the rack, increase your panel spacing. Don't stick the board so close together to try to get more work out. Increase the spacing to at least one inch in between the panels so solution flows more evenly, particularly through the holes and across the pads. Now, that will enhance the, the uniformity of the coating of the nickel as well. Now, we already talked about XRF. Again, I want to say that you should have some type of test coupons that you evaluate every day, particularly if you are a big user of electroless nickel immersion gold. Do uh, daily monitoring of your, not just controlling the plating solution in the proper ranges, but ensure that, number one, you're not getting excessive corrosion. Run some test coupons, just monitor it. If there's changes, if you see you've suddenly got up to level three or more, then there's something wrong in your process. Your gold got too low, the operators are leaving the boards in the, in the gold solution too long. You may have some non-uniform coating of nickel because of improper controls of the nickel plating solution, leaving more potential for corrosion spikes. So these are very, very important. And moving forward, you know, do everything you can from a process standpoint, both in the nickel and the gold, to minimize nickel corrosion.